Welcome back to the Hopeless Hobby Addict. I've just started painting up the Lord of the Rings, Journeys in Middle-Earth, and thought I would share my painting journeys with those who are looking for some ideas on how to paint up these miniatures themselves using Army Painter products, the Speed Paint line of their contrasts, and their War Paint acrylic line currently available. If you're not familiar with Lord of the Rings, Journeys in Middle-Earth, this is a game produced by Fantasy Flight Games. It is not a Kickstarter item. It is readily available online or in your local game shops for purchase. There's numerous small miniature expansions for it and two larger box set expansions that include miniatures, more game tiles, more content. It is app driven, but there is no dice chucking and Fantasy Flight has had a lot of practice working on their apps between their Star Wars Imperial Assault game Mansions of Madness, and Descent, to name a few. The miniatures from Fantasy Flight Games have consistently impressed me. For something coming out of retail and not a fancy Kickstarter, they are very well detailed and I'm finding them to be a great pleasure to paint. I'll be focused on my usual table-ready standard, with my goal being just enough steps to make it have a good table presentation without spending hours and hours on little highlights and tweaks. I will be sharing examples of acrylic paints and contrast speed paint versions anytime there's two or more miniatures of a particular type. As there are three wargs, we will do one in acrylic and two in speed paint for this episode one. Bookmarks are in the description below to skip to whatever steps you want to see on the various models. The wargs have been featured in many of the recent Hobbit and Fellowship of the Ring movies you might have seen in the theater, as well as being somewhat described in Tolkien's books themselves. They are, of course, a nemesis to the good folk of the Middle-earth, but these models that come with Fantasy Flight make me feel more like looking at hyenas or perhaps lions, just because the way the, the mane and the fur is, and the way their face is, and the tail. So I'm sticking to a color palette that kind of leans into the hyena and the lion with its colors of the darker mane and the tail and various parts. First up is the speed paint variation of the works. I wanted something in that lion hyena skin, like a yellow brown for the main fur. I mixed up two parts satchel brown to three parts ancient honey. Both of these are new army painter speed paint 2.0 colors. Priming wise, no slap chop on this. I went with this good old plain rattle can white. I do paint two speed paint variants. One will be a slightly darker brown by doing additional layers and adding a little more brown than the ancient honey in it, just to give them some tonal variations. I'll primarily be showing you the one in the picture here though with the satchel brown honey mix. Pay extra attention to getting enough on your brush too. There are a lot of nice little nooks and crannies, ribs, muscles, spots along the cheeks and legs that will shade up nicely when the contrast paints work their way in. And I'm using that to kind of help develop some splotchy almost spots like the hyenas hide on the sides here. For the mane, that thick backside of fur, and there's also some thick tufts of fur on the feet, legs, and a little kind of bushy pointy tail, I mixed up dark wood, hardened leather, and speed paint medium in a 3 to 2 to 2 drop ratio. I'm actually using speed paint 1.0 colors I had left over here for the dark wood and hardened leather, but I am mixing them with medium from 2.0, which I found to 
stim the reactivation issue a bit when you mix them in with that medium. For the nose, I went with Noble Skin, which is a Army Painter 2.0 color. For the mouth, I really like the Army Painter Murder Scene Speed Paint. It actually will be used on the acrylic model as well. It's kind of a purpley pink, I guess. It looked good on the tongue and inside the mouth though, so I went with that. For my standard shaky caffeinated hands, I employ my old friend the Micron .005 pen to dot in the eyes. Yeah, maybe it's a cheat, but it's my crutch and I like it. It works pretty well for most of these little tiny models. I feel like the wolf head is kind of slung low. He might be looking upwards at his enemy. So I aim for that top center edge on the eyes to put the pupil in. Next up, I want to hit the high ridges with some dry brushing on the back side and those tufts of fur on the legs and around the face. For this, I pull out normal Army Painter War Paint acrylics. I use some Banshee Brown and mix that in with some Desert Yellow to make kind of a lightish yellow brown to bring up the fur tops. I do a second pass after adding some brain matter beige to hit the, just the very tops of that fur. We'll be using that in a bit to work with the speed paints to do some different hair highlighting in there. Decided to dial things back down a little bit with some strong tone and dark tone army painter wash in a three to one ratio. So it's basically a dark brown, probably Agrax Rift Shade if you have some GW stuff would be equivalent, or any dark brown wash. After the wash dries, I take Army Painter Sand Golem Speed Paint. You can use version one or two, doesn't matter here. I highlight up those dry brush tops on the very edges of those ridges on the tufts on the back. 
trying to mix in some alternating kind of fur colors bring out a little more of the color of the sides and the face kind of highlights I guess you could say in the fur give it some different character I clean up the teeth with some Brain Matter Beige Army Painter Acrylic War Paint. At this point, I really just need to do some work on the base, and I would call these table ready. If you had asked me a year ago, I probably would have just painted the base black and moved on. But as I was working through the Deep Rock Galactic series, I started having some fun playing with actual basing material. So we will revisit the speed paint and acrylic paint versions of the Warg here for one final section in the end where we base all those up with some various rocks and scenery. So for the acrylic painted warg, I'll be using this Army Painter Regiment brush that came with one of these paint sets I got. I feel like I need to branch out and try some of these other brushes though to make sure I'm not missing out on something. I started out by thinning down some desert yellow army painter war paints. Something in a khaki yellow brown would suffice here, similar to the color we just did in speed paint on the side fur of the bodies. This is going to be my base color for a majority of the body fur. I'll be thinning things down this time with my own solution, consisting of 50-50 water to matte medium and a drop of flow aid and that's all mixed into a 10 milliliter dropper bottle for convenience. I've been finding this combo to give me a nice smooth application and the medium in the water helps the paints from separating their colors as easily while diluting it. Certainly GW Lamian medium, um, my Vallejo medium thinner I normally use, or just plain water are of course viable alternatives here, but I'm an experimenter, so I'm always looking for my new secret sauce. I find this does help me grow though, and I learn a little more each time I mix different products and try different things. Keeps the hobby interesting. So it didn't take long for this army painter brush to get battered and start having some wild hairs. Gotta say, not impressed. Back to my old faithful 40 cent standby. One happy choice number one. For the thicker mane fur and the tufts, I went with oak brown army painter war paint and a touch of matte black here to darken it up a bit. I thinned it with the same thinner as before to get that nice consistency so it would go on smooth. It might take you a couple coats.
and for the eyes. Yep. I pulled out the Micron again, of course. Same drill as the speed paint version. Top center on the eyes looking up at you. I was thinking maybe you could use like a yellow wash, highly diluted or something, or something in an amber color too, if you want to kind of make it like that cat or dog eye around the pupil in a different color, but eh, I wasn't that brave on this time through, so I pretty much left them white. For the teeth, I hit it with some Army Painter Drake Tooth and some matte white. I was trying to give it an off-white uh, tooth color. Now I do bring the speed paint back in here. I do like that murder scene. So I stuck with that from the speed painted versions and use that in its tongue and mouth and there is as well. I debated spilling some out here as I'm painting it just to kind of see if it would look like, you know, dripping blood. But I did later decide to clean that up and just leave the teeth basically plain. It's time to hit the body with a wash and start to create some shadows and pull the colors together here. Again, I went with a darker brown color consisting of a two to one ratio of Army Painter Strong Tone and Dark Tone. Slightly different than the Speed Paint ones, but the results felt like they were about the same. Agrax Earthshade would also be a substitute again here. Same color combination I did with the speed paint version, Banshee Brown mixed with some desert yellow, and then a final layer with some brain matter beige in there to really go light. I'll meet you back at the basing section for the final steps on this model and the speed paint versions. So the basing went on another experimental tangent here. I do spend a fair amount of time in my local hardware store with other projects and woodworking and around the home. And I had found this grout recently and thought it's a hell of a lot cheaper for this big tub of grout than a little tiny bottle of say some of the Vallejo diorama stuff that you can smear on the bottom of your miniature stand there to give it some texture. So we're gonna give this a try. It was very thick here and I knew I needed to dilute it down somehow. So I decided to take some strong Elmer's glue. Figured it'll help it stick better to the base anyways. And then a little bit of water. And I mixed that all into a little slurry of earth colored grout. Once I had mixed that up, I took some globs of it with the end of my brush, stuck it on the base, and then just used one of my crummy glue spreading brushes to kind of start smearing it around on the bottoms. 
I did this on both of the speed paint models. I just kind of smooshed it around without trying to cover up the feet. This is my first time to do this, so no real set approach, I guess, yet. This is a experiment in action. I see a lot of people use texture like this, color it up with speed paints, so I wanted to try that out this time. For the other one, I used some Vallejo Diorama FX earth texture. This is like a desert yellow sand. It definitely had a thinner, more spreadable consistency straight out of the bottle. More made for what its purpose is intended than grout was. But I still diluted it down a bit with some Elmer's glue. Just to make it flow a little better and, again, hopefully make it stick better to the base. It's definitely a slightly finer grained material than the grout, but you know, its purpose is for miniatures and dioramas and model making, so I would expect as such. But I feel you'll see in the end that the results were equivalent, so I have some decisions to make going forward if I want to get some nice pre-stained brown grout for dirt cheap or buy variations of these fancier ones like this Vallejo product. Army Painter does not seem to have anything like this. They stick to the little rocks and stick on battle grasses and various things like that, but I have not seen them produce a material like this. You'd spread down first for texture. Be sure to be aware of that basing material that sneaks in on those sides. I definitely missed a few chunks I noticed when I went back later on after painting everything black and getting to the final shots at the end of the video that there were a few little kernels hanging off the side so my bad and that's those darn end photos that always show you your bigger mistakes. So once the grout and the diorama stuff Vallejo dried I did a dry brushing of white across the texture as a prep for hitting it with some speed paint to help the speed paint come out. I will say the grout seemed to give me more, you know, train bumps and a little more rockier, rougher look, which I kind of liked. I could see where the smoother Vallejo has its place too. I decided to try Fire Drake, which is a speed paint 2.0 color, diluted one to one with speed paint medium to color up the sand give it kind of a reddish brown base to start with. Now of course with the diorama sand it's a bright yellow to begin with so it's like priming your model with a yellow color. It gives you a little different effect than the other dark earth color that the speed paint ones have. Here I'm just doing my matte medium mixed with black acrylic inks, Taylor Rowney or whatever you've got. I've got a number of options from my local hobby store, so I have a few different ones from Liquitex and Taylor Rowney and those. The matte medium to me just helps it stay a little duller, not be overly shiny, and I figure it gives it a little stronger uh, protection and coat. Here I'm doing some gloss of varnish. Since I had already practiced with this first speed paint one, putting the pieces there on the bottom, the shrubbery and stuff, I didn't want to spray. So two coats of gloss is usually my normal. Then I usually come back with some matte varnish to dull things back down if I don't like the shiny effect on a particular model.
So I do have Army Painter branded glue, but I also have this Elmer Strong glue. Hell of a lot cheaper for way more. And frankly, as far as I can tell, they're basically the same thing. The Army Painters might have been a little thicker, but I just took blobs of this Elmer's, put it all over various locations on the base here. I was going to try out some of these loose sprinkle on grass material. I just got some tweezers. I think this is like battlefield grass from Army Painter. It's part of a little sample kit they have where you get a bunch of different dirts and vegetation all in one little kit for right around $20 if I recall. I like to do these in a little Tupperware cup just because if there's bits that brush off when I'm kind of done putting it on, when it's all said and done, when I'm done tapping it in here, I can just dump those right back into the baggies and reuse it. I left some spots open here so I can put some more glue in for either rocks. These are some of the bigger cork kind of battlefield rocks from Army Painter. Come in a little bag with that same kit I got. And there's room also to put in some bigger tufts of you know vegetation and grass. You can get on these little sheets. I peel one off and dip it in the glue and then stick it in the free spot on the other side here to give something a little a little bigger, a little meatier. And remember, don't panic when you see the glue on there. I certainly did for the longest time, but it does truly dry clear. So you don't even see it when it's done drying. In fact, you can smear another layer across everything when you're done. That's the rocks and bits to kind of give them an extra seal in if you want, and you don't even notice that either. You can even use it as a second kind of seal layer over your rocks after you paint it with that speed paint and such there to help really keep it in place. It does a good job and it acts as a protectant and keeps everything kind of sealed in there. And again, it dries transparent, so you really don't even notice. I suppose if you made a big enough blob that physically dried as a drop or something though, that would be visible. Keep it thin. Again, same thing, trying to glue in some rocks here. Tapping it all back in the little container here to use another day. Now this stuff I'm not as thrilled about. This is supposed to be like an underbrush and it's almost like a rubbery webbed chunk of stuff and you peel these pieces off and they're very fiddly, kind of hard to stick on. Definitely my least favorite of the shrubbery options that I got with this little sample kit. But I tried it here just to, just for practice and give some variety. So they seem to stick once you get enough glue in the right spot. Which I'm putting a little extra right there to help it along. There is definitely an art to these folks that do the basing on these though. I can see where the practice is definitely something that will make this a smoother and more realistic process the more times I do it. So there's a long road ahead for me. I think basing them though is definitely bringing the models an extra layer of enhancements that is not taking me a lot of extra time to do. It's almost more fun than some of the stressful painting. Here is our final three wargs presented on a piece of the game tile from the game. They're a little larger than some of the orcs and goblins and brigands and various other heroes, so easing myself into this box. That wraps up episode one of the wargs for my Lord of the Rings Journeys to Middle Earth painting series. As always, thanks for stopping by and watching. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe, or comment. I've enjoyed making these videos and growing the channel, and hopefully I can keep producing something of useful content to 
new painters looking for just quick easy ways to get their minis on the table looking good and back to playing the game. See you soon.